FM 94, The Dark. It is that time again. It's time to get to know a band we play here on The Dark. And excited about this, and everybody in central Minnesota is excited about this, because Halfway Jam is coming July 28th through the 30th. And actually opening the jam on Saturday the 30th will be the band 10 Years. And on the phone right now, I'm talking with the drummer, Kyle Mayer. And first of all, Kyle, thanks so much for joining me on The Dark. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. What's hey. up, Central Minnesota? Central Minnesota is hot right now, and uh, I tell you what, uh, we're going to have a nice steamy week here, and uh, I'm hoping that the weather will cool down a little bit next week, but uh, I'm sure you're a veteran in playing in warm weather, aren't you? Oh, my goodness, yeah. I mean, I mean, we, we've had shows that were uh, in the dead of summer in, in July with no air conditioning in the south. I mean, just face-melting. What, do you, what would you prefer when it comes to weather, I guess? If there had to be an ideal weather, of course, a lot of the concerts are indoors, so you can have them climate-controlled. But for an outdoor concert, what would be the ideal weather for you? Oh, 75 degrees. That's uh, 75 degrees and no rain. That's ideal for me. <laughs> I suppose. Definitely the no rain with all the equipment, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, let's talk about the band 10 years. And, of course, now you've been with the band for a few years can you give us some of the history of the band from the past? We'd love to know that a little bit. How did this band all come about? Um, ten years uh, from from the very inception uh, began in the late '90s, um, and we have. Uh, I'm very happy to say we still have uh, three original members with us. Um, of course, our singer Jesse Hasek, um, uh, our guitar player Tater Johnson. And then we recently got back our original guitar player, Matt Wantland, um, just joined us a few months ago, and it's just been a delight to have him. And it's really sort of one of those things where uh, they started a band in high school and and just stuck with it. And uh, somehow out of that first record, uh, the song Wasteland was written and conceived and just kind of blew up. So uh, I think everybody uh, wasn't quite sure uh, what ride they were <laughs> in for, but uh, it, it's been quite an adventure. And I've been working on and off with the guys uh, just about six years now. Very cool. What's it like, I guess? You know, obviously, if you joined them six years ago, that would have been around 2010 or so. And uh, Wasteland came out in 2005. They've had other albums since then. Uh, what was it like for you to join a band that had seen some success? And uh, I guess what was that feeling coming into this band? Well, um, I had been hacking it out in the L.A. scene for, for quite a number of years and actually did meet uh, the guys out there when they were recording the Feeding the Walls album. Uh, they actually came to the bar I worked at, the drink, so that's, that's where I ended up meeting them, uh, through a mutual friend. But uh, to come into the situation, um, I consider myself lucky in the sense that I, I really wasn't a big fan of the band. I had heard of them, but I think I was kind of more able to handle the situation as a professional and then once i got through my audition and i kind of sat back and rubbed my eyes i was like oh my god this band's amazing and uh and then i just absolutely fell in love with the band but i, I think maybe had i been a, a super fan or a big fanboy, i might have psyched myself out in the <laughs> audition absolutely i could see it so let me ask you this question since you weren't a big fan of the band at first why was that um uh, no particular reason other than I, I guess I was just so immersed in the metal scene at the time. Okay. Um, I was I was playing in a L.A. based band called The Changing, uh, and we were fronted by uh, Kalen Chase. He he was out with Corn for a while doing some backup vocals. Yep. And uh, he's actually singing for Joey Jordison's new band, right. Vimic. Vimic. Yep. So um, I, I was just super into metal music, and um, uh, ten years really kind of opened my eyes to. Uh, a, a big part of the rock world that I think I just I just hadn't really paid attention to before, and I absolutely fell in love with it. We're talking with uh, Kyle Mayer, the drummer of the band 10 Years, which is coming to Halfway Jam. Uh, they'll be there jamming uh, early on, 4 o'clock. And uh, first of all, it's kind of odd that you're doing it at 4 o'clock, but I heard you must have some kind of a, you have to get out of there at a certain time to go somewhere. Am I correct on that? Um. I need to fly home uh, because my fiance is having a birthday party. That's but, what um, it was. It's actually the same. It's show day, but I think we're going to have a couple friends uh, spend the night. So 
Um, I'm just going to try to get home at some point on Sunday afternoon. But, <laughs> you know, um, you know, doing this job, uh, you, you do miss things. You, you miss birthdays. You miss holidays and stuff like that. Um, it is it's just part of the gig, man. It's important, though. I mean, family is important, and as you go along, as you get older, you, you, you realize that. when you Maybe when you were younger, you know, in your early 20s, mid-20s, you didn't care about that stuff. But as you mature, you grow older, and you get a family, you have to take care of those things, don't you, Kyle? Uh, you, you certainly do. Um, you, you know, uh, a good number of us in the band, you know, are, are married or have children or, or are getting married, and, uh, you know, everybody's... 30 something now and um we're very lucky in the sense that you know we don't have to play 200 shows a year um we probably spend about six months of the year traveling um not all consecutively but you know throughout the year which leaves us you know time to to you know to be home to be parents to be kids to just be involved with our families and friends yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're talking with Kyle. Of course, he's going to be here 10 years. The band, as I mentioned, 4 o'clock. They're going to open up the jam on Saturday, the final day, the 30th. Do you guys like playing festivals? Do you like playing that kind of thing when you have uh, thousands upon thousands of people in front of you? Oh, you know, you know we love it. And um, you never quite know what you're getting into. Um, touring, you know, one, one day you, you'll play a, a, a smaller club with – 200 people packed at the gills, and then the next day you're playing a festival show with 10,000 people. I mean, and everything in between. You, you just never know what to expect. But we always have a blast at festivals, and uh, and we always enjoy seeing the other bands, too. And, and you make friends over the years, and um, it's nice to cross paths you know, with uh, band members and former crew guys and just all that stuff. We love it. Yeah, there's a pretty killer lineup on uh, Saturday night there uh, with the likes of yourselves, uh, Buck Cherry, Skillet, some of those bands that are going to be there, and some younger up-and-coming bands, too. Do you get a chance when you're at these kind of festivals to mingle with the other bands and kind of bounce things off of each other a little bit, or is it more just, hey, how you doing, and you you move on? Um, you, you know, just like anything in life, um, you have to make an effort. But um, we did a festival just the other week, and... Uh, we, we ran into our very good friends in Break and Benjamin, hmm. and actually one of their crew guys uh, worked with us for a long time. So I just kind of made up my business to go say hello, and I just went and chit chatted with them while he was changing guitar strings and and cleaning up the uh, the gear. And you know, you just got to make yourself be seen. How is how is the camaraderie, I guess, in, in the rock industry right now? I mean, and of course, ten years has been around for a while. You've been with the band six years. So maybe it's hard to ask this question to you, but have you noticed a difference from what it was back early on, maybe in the you know late '90s, early 2000s, to what it is today? Um, yeah, I think you nailed it there. Being that I didn't really start doing this full time um, until you know uh, a few years ago, um, I don't really have a frame of uh, comparison. Right. But I will say uh, the camaraderie is overall very good and. Um, We've been very blessed uh, to, to play and tour with some amazing bands uh, that also became uh, very good friends of ours. Um, I mean, just to name a few off, uh, recently, Breaking Benjamin, of course. Yeah. Uh, that was a great tour. We were out with P.O.D. for a while. Uh, awesome guys. Uh, me and Wub hit it off right away. Mm-hmm. Just talking drums every day. Um, drummers tend to do that, I think. <laughs> uh, you know, I made buddies with, with Miko from uh, Apocalyptica mm-hmm. and... Uh, Luke Williams from Dead Better Circus. Right. It seems like growing up as a kid, and this is just maybe my look at it, is every boy wants to be a drummer. But eventually none of them end up that way. <laughs> was that something you wanted to do back as a kid? Oh, boy. I, I think it was just a timing thing. Um, in the early 90s, uh, Metallica's The Black Album was massive. Yep. And, uh I went through a period where I wanted to play bass. I wanted to be Jason Newstead. Yeah. And some things had shifted around the time of my birthday, and then I wanted to be Lars. So that just kind of lined up with my birthday, and I got uh, my first drum set. So I, I think it was just timing. You know, uh, going uh, talking to you here a little bit, uh, it seems like your your taste of music back in the day was a little bit heavier. And, and 10 years, I mean, they've had some heavy songs but they're not as heavy as a band as a lot of people might think they are. Uh, how would you guess can kind of talk about your music and maybe uh, if you had to give yourself a description of the music, 
What would you say 10 years music is more like? Um, I would have to say that we are, um, I don't really consider us um, a heavy metal band. Right. I, I would say we're uh, maybe an ethereal rock band, okay. I think would be the way I would say it. And there's definitely some heavy moments. Um, and uh, on an interesting side note, I mean, we're actually right here in Knoxville, uh, starting to throw out the very first ideas for what's going to become the next album. So, um, I mean, pretty much when I hang up with you, I'm going to go back upstairs and jam with the guys. So, what? What? I guess what is kind of the the motive of the next album? Are you guys have a plan on that yet, or are you kind of just kind of limbo and just whatever happens happens? Um, we are hoping to be, to be finished with the album um, around the holidays. Okay, December or January. Um, I, I can say that we'll have it completed and recorded by then. Right. But uh, I think for right now, we're really just um, trying to be creative, and I guess maybe kind of sort it out later, if that makes sense. Gotcha, gotcha. We're talking to Kyle Mayer, the drummer of the band 10 Years. They're coming to Halfway Jam next Saturday. Uh, let's talk about uh, some of the songs and that. And when you play live, uh, what are the songs that you enjoy playing live from the library of 10 Years? Oh, boy. Um, I do quite enjoy uh, the song Knives from the album Minus the Machine. Okay. Um, it's just a pretty crushingly heavy song. Um, what else do we do on this tour uh, that I really enjoyed? I do enjoy uh, the track Actions and Motives yes. off uh, the second album, Division. Right. Always a crowd pleaser and super fun to play. Yeah. And that was my next question. The crowd pleasing songs, which song? I'm assuming Wasteland and that gets probably a big applause and excitement on that. But what are some of the other ones that the crowd really gravitates around on these 10 year songs? Um, of course, Wasteland is uh, uh, what the band is most known for. And uh, it, it's always enjoyable to play that song. Um, uh, the fans do keep it fresh for us every night, and, and we still enjoy playing the song. Um, another big song that we do is Fix Me. Fix Me, yeah. Uh, se- seems to be a crowd pleaser, and, and people people kind of freak out a little bit when we play that song. <laughs> I would think they'd freak out if you play Shoot It Out. That's my thing, but... I mean, I, I, that's another one. Shoot it out's a big one too. I, I mean, just I love the beginning of it. Just right then, you're just it's in your face instantly. Um, on this, we just came off a little ten day uh, tour here, and uh, we actually we opened the show with shoot it out. So right. it's pretty off the hook. So, can we get any secrets on possibly what we're going to see coming up here? Just a little over a week from the band. You got any any tidbits, uh, or maybe better yet. Uh, when the people are listening right now, what they should look for on stage coming up when we see you play next week? Ooh, um, it is hard to say. Uh, we are going through a bit of a transition, um, um, being that we are starting the writing process here. Right. Uh, we have an acoustic tour coming up in a couple weeks that uh, needs a lot of pre-production, um, and we're really going to dissect a lot of the songs. So um, some of those changes might carry over to the to the show, but... Um, it's hard to say right now. I just got to take it a day at a time. We got a lot of work to do. Absolutely. Hey, one more thing here before we get let you go here. I got to ask this question. I ask all the uh, interviews artists that I do. Uh, what artist would you like to cover one of a 10-year song? So and you can choose any artist in the world. Who would you like to cover a 10-year song? It doesn't even have to be a rock guy or a gal. That is, wow. Um, I have never thought of that. And that, when you're when you're done here, I want you to go up and talk to your buddies up there with that, you know, and ask them that question. And then I'll, I'll see you backstage on Saturday, and then uh, you can tell me what their response is, or they can tell me. That'd be cool. Yeah, that that is boy. I, I mean, uh, there, there's a million songs I would love to cover <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, as the band Ten Years. You know, uh, anything Pink Floyd, right? Um, but for somebody to recreate one of our songs, yes. uh, I would have to put my thinking cap on for that one. Okay. I'll have to get back to you in uh, at the festival. All right, we're gonna. I'm gonna hold you to that, and we're gonna get a chance to talk to you uh, backstage, maybe after the set or something, or before, and then uh, we'll we record a little interview, and then we'll play it back on our airways following the festival, so we get your answers. That sound good? 
That sounds lovely. Awesome. Uh, last thing, I guess, uh, as I mentioned, uh, 10 years is the band. You're going to be out there rocking here in Minnesota. Uh, and I kind of already asked this question, but I'll ask it again. What should the fans expect from a 10 years concert coming up next week? Um, plan on breaking a sweat. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't matter if it's hot or not. It's going to be a sweat show is what you're telling me. Yeah, we, we, we keep it pretty lively, and, and we pride ourselves on, on throwing down as hard as we can every night. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. I've never seen you in concert before. I'm assuming the band has been in Minnesota before. Have you had a chance to come to Minnesota before? Uh, oh, yeah, se- several times. Um, I, I, we've been there a, a few times this year. Okay. Uh, I believe we were just in Minneapolis uh, with Apocalyptica okay. a few months ago. You might have yeah. played down at First Avenue or something like that? Oh, gosh, what was the name of the venue? Um, <laughs> That's okay. I can't, I can't think of it right now. But you've been to Minnesota before, and uh, we get it, we're pretty rocking up here, aren't we? Our fans are pretty wild. Oh, Minnesota's great. Yeah, I love it up there. Awesome, awesome. Well, I wish you the best of luck uh, with the new record, getting that already. We're looking forward to that, and more importantly, we're looking forward to next Saturday when you guys take the stage at Halfway Jam at 4 o'clock. Kyle, thanks so much for joining me. Hey, I uh, can't wait to, to see you guys at the show, and uh, yeah, thanks for talking to me. Once again, that is the drummer of the band, 10 years. That is Kyle Mayer, and of course, that band is going to be at Halfway Jam, and why not? Let's play the big song that they're known for. Here's Wasteland. It's on the dark. It's on FM 94.